morning, ladies. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, thank you very much for finding time so that we can do this together this morning. I have a statement um, that I intend to deliver, a short statement. Fellow Kenyans, I address you at a time like no other time in our memory. This year's Easter is going to be drastically different in many significant ways, but it's a message that remains the same. After the trial, sorrow and gloom that comes with the crucifixion of Christ on Friday, there is assured hope that rises with the resurrection on Sunday. Our current situation has brought us its share of tribulation and heartbreaks. But what a better time for us to consider our blessed hope in the Almighty God for the assured victory ahead. We are in a new place, confronting a situation that is wholly unprecedented in our time. We have never been here before. Our children are out of school. The favorite Matatu and border rider, reliable Mamamboga, that dependable Baba and Salunist are all facing serious challenges. Our airline, our airline industry is grounded. Hotels have shut their doors. We can no longer attend places of worship as we always did. This is phenomenal. And the cause of all this is the novel coronavirus, a minute fragment of inner genetic code. Fortunately for us, defeating this virus, which has occasioned so much suffering mayhem and disruption on a scale never witnessed in recent history does not require the nuclear bomb, mighty armies, or jet fighters. Simple behavioral and hygiene measures, such as avoiding handshakes, washing hands with soap, sanitizing, wearing masks, social distancing, and staying at home Simple as they seem, guarantee us a decisive blow against this deadly virus. The fight against coronavirus is a paradox. While on the one hand we have a deadly virus that threatens to wipe out people and disrupt the world on a scale never before experienced, Defeating it completely, on the other hand, takes such basic measures and elementary precautions. We must not be confused by the simplicity of washing hands, social distancing, and staying at home to underestimate the deadly, dangerous, and destructive coronavirus. Let us remember that the coronavirus cannot move or multiply by itself. It desperately needs our bodies for mobility, for transport from one victim to another, and from one locality to another. Curtailing our movements will completely immobilize this enemy and stop its spread. This is why we urge those who can work from home to do so while those who must work in factories, offices, business premises, and such other areas to meticulously exercise social distancing. Employers should adopt a shift system that enables staff to work at different times of the day or on different days to minimize congestion in workplaces. 
and unless it is absolutely necessary and with compelling and extraordinary reasons, the rest of us must stay at home. This is also the case for the restriction of movements into and out of Nairobi, Kuala, Kilifi, and Mombasa, counties where the highest incidences of COVID-19 have been reported. These simple steps, avoiding handshakes and unnecessary contact with bodies and surfaces, regularly washing hands with soap, sanitizing, keeping a safe social distance, wearing masks, avoiding unnecessary movement and staying at home are the most effective arsenal against the deadly coronavirus and will be part of how we live and relate for the foreseeable future. As government, we appreciate and commend the millions of Kenyans who have taken this directive seriously and are conscientiously complying with the protocols as issued and updated by our health ministry. Those not committed to these measures should know and understand that they are putting their lives, those of their families, friends, and millions of other Kenyans at death risk. This kind of reckless negligence, ladies and gentlemen, is unacceptable. To protect ourselves, every Kenyan should go the extra mile and perform the patriotic duty of ensuring that their families, their friends, workmates, and neighbors adhere to these protocols as issued by government from time to time. We must not negotiate our safety and survival. Let all of us be our brother's keeper. Many Kenyans are, however, asking, while government is telling us what to do, what is government doing about the COVID-19 pandemic? And allow me to say the following. President Uhuru Kenyatta has taken personal charge of this situation and mobilized government at both levels, together with development partners, the private sector, and friends of Kenya to accomplish a number of objectives. Our first key task is to assemble and provide a body of accurate and verifiable information to the public and to work with all partners, including the media, on its dissemination so as to empower citizens to take the right decisions and make the correct choices. Information on the nature, threat, and remedies of the novel coronavirus and COVID-19 at this point in time is the foremost duty of the government given that citizen behavior and action is at the heart of defeating this pandemic. Success stories around the world indicate strongly that effective management of COVID-19 is attributable to available or availability of accurate information and efficient public uptake, use, and response. In preparation for the possible escalation of the numbers of COVID-19 cases from hundreds into thousands, the government has designated and equipped different hospital and other facilities, including the 600-bed capacity Kenyatta University teaching referral and research hospital in Thika, while every county has been tasked to do the same with their health facilities around the country. Further, we have directed the Ministry of Education to work with counties to identify boarding schools that can be used as isolation facilities for COVID-19 cases when the situation reaches there. The government is working with counties through KEMSA to stockpile medical supplies necessary for the management of cases of COVID-19 in diagnosed persons, while the Public Service Commission 
is undertaking recruitment of additional health personnel, including 1,000 doctors to be advertised this week, so as to build adequate capacity to manage increased numbers of COVID-19 victims. Number four, the statistics released by the Ministry of Health on the number of persons infected so far has come mainly from testing of persons in quarantine and their known contacts. The testing process at the moment is slow and limited. We are working with the World Health Organization and Africa Center for Disease Control on the approval of rapid diagnostic kits produced by international and local institutions, including Kemri, to scale up our testing. I did speak to the director of Kemri yesterday, and they confirmed to me that in a couple of weeks, they will be ready with their kits for mass testing. Once approved, these diagnostic kits will enable the government to carry out mass testing of Kenyans, which is necessary to capture all those infected by the, by the virus for isolation, containment, and management. This exercise is critical for us to adequately and comprehensively respond and manage this pandemic. We are working with international partners, including the World Bank and the private sector on the acquisition of additional ventilators, sanitizers, and masks with the aim of enhancing our capabilities and preparedness. Kenya Bureau of Standards has provided standards for production of these items and local manufacturers should produce what they can and must without any further delay. We are also scaling up oxygen supply to all the 94 hospitals that were identified under the MES program for use by patients who may need supplementary oxygen. This crisis has completely disrupted our lives and taken away everything we took for granted. Normal is a word we have to rapidly unlearn and hopefully relearn in future after the coronavirus. Yet, if we think that our lives have been disrupted, the world of healthcare workers has been turned upside down, inside out. More than anyone else, this crisis demands that frontline health workers give not just their best, but that they give their all continuously. They have to be away from their families so that we may be with ours. They have to come into close contact with the infected persons so that we may remain safe. While all of us are soldiers in this great army against COVID-19, our generals, crack units, elite fighters at the front line are our healthcare professionals. To ensure that our community health workers, nurses, clinical officers, paramedics, laboratory technicians, pharmacists, and doctors perform their duties without them being compromised, personal protective gear is being made available and inadequate quantities to ensure sustained and to ensure sustained supply of these personal protective equipments local manufacturing capacity has been identified and contracted. To assist our healthcare workers to have, who have demonstrated inspiring selflessness and diligence under extreme stressful and challenging conditions, let us rigorously observe the protocols set out by the Ministry of Health so as not to overburden them with unnecessary and avoidable incidences of infection. Let us also remember them and their families in our daily prayers and in every other way that we can. 
As His Excellency the President directed, our Treasury team is working with the legislature to realign our budget to make necessary, to make resources available for various interventions in combating the pandemic. Provisions of water, especially in our towns and particularly in informal settlements, will be a key consideration. The identification of vulnerable groups who may require food subsidies has been mapped out by our national government coordination staff in consultation with all counties to ensure timely and targeted intervention if this situation escalates. We encourage Parliament in their patriotic mandate to exercise imagination commensurate with the magnitude of the challenge we face. As government makes efforts to mitigate the suffering of the people through a raft of measures already announced, I wish to appeal to the private sector to be compassionate, understanding and forbearing with our people and particularly to employers to make necessary adjustments on non-core expenses to safeguard jobs and to endeavor not to lay off staff. I also appeal to the financial sector, financial services sector, and more specifically the banking industry to be equally understanding and consider instituting loan interest moratoria, suspend foreclosure on properties, and work out a framework to renegotiate loans with borrowers as requested by government. Equally, we encourage our county governments and assemblies to realign their budgets and redirect their resources towards intervention to manage this pandemic and its socioeconomic ramifications, and especially to the vulnerable. Our farmers, in their millions, should come out strongly and take advantage of the good rains that we continue to experience and grow as much food as is possible. County governments are urged to work with the national government to coordinate extension, mechanization, and other enabling services. We also acknowledge the exemplary coverage by the media who have gone to great lengths to facilitate dissemination of information that has enhanced public knowledge on this pandemic. We have also tasked health officials in counties to proactively issue guidelines for food supply chains to control the handling of farm produce, including vegetables and fruits, as well as commercial crops like Mira. The continued supply of fresh produce and food in its entirety is important for our collective health. Finally, though we are going to celebrate this Easter weekend differently, we must remind ourselves that Jesus was persecuted, betrayed, crucified, and that he ultimately died and was crucified and was buried. But he triumphed over death. His resurrection is the reason for our hope of eternal life. I call on the Christian community to lift up our nation in prayer this Easter period. And I equally ask Kenyans of all faiths to commend our nation to God's unfailing mercy and grace for us to overcome this daunting pandemic. Thank you very much for listening to me, and God bless you all. Good. I will uh, take uh, a few questions just for matters of clarification, and I hope we keep this as it should be. And I hope everybody is, give, is, is keeping uh, safe social distance. I can see some people who are violating. Very good.
Yes, my friend. Okay, maybe I will take another question and then I will answer both of them. Thank you, Vincent. Um, first, the raft of issues that we propose to Parliament cover the whole spectrum of where we can reach as government. If you look at the list of interventions that will be captured under the program that we are working on, it is targeting a huge section of the vulnerable and people living in informal settlements. The people in the informal sector are a very huge constituency that will benefit from the interventions that we are going to roll out. And therefore, it is not entirely correct to say the interventions that we have done so far only focus on the formal sector. Parliament will shortly make input, and that is why in my statement I said, Parliament must exercise commensurate imagination and support the proposals that we have made and even make them better as the people's representatives so that together, working together between the executive and the legislatures, both at the national and at the county level, we can deal with this challenge as partners from one side. Secondly, the operations of government is a preserve of the people in government. How we decide to communicate. We took a decision that this being a national pandemic, all of us are going to read from one script. The president is going to take the lead and the ministers responsible in the various dockets will do their job. You may want to know that as matters of operation in government, we are making teleconferencing and video conferencing a big portion of government operation to facilitate social distancing and to avoid the necessity to be in meetings physically. You may want to know that many meetings now of PSS and ministers are carried out on video or on telephone through video conferencing and teleconferencing. And maybe just to remind you, you may want to ask yourself why the president and his deputy cannot travel in the same equipment at any one time. And in a situation like this, 
I think the answer to that question may help you uh, understand why we have the situation we have at the moment. For the record, we consult regularly, almost daily, with the president and all the other ministers that are carrying out the various tasks in the management of this pandemic. And that is the position of the Jubilee administration. I think I've answered both questions, including the one of Vincent. Yes, my friend? Yes, Patrick. Uh, two weeks is your, is your assertion, it's not mine. Uh, first, uh, Patrick, let me say that um, on the matter of the doctors, as you are aware, already adverts have been rolled out by the Public Service Commission for 5,400 health workers. When I spoke to the chair of the Public Service uh, this morning, an additional 1,000 staff, specifically doctors, will be advertised this week. And this is the reason, the reason why we are recruiting additional staff is because it is necessary for us to enhance our capacity to manage this pandemic because when we roll out the mass testing, the numbers of people infected with COVID-19 will go up, and therefore it is necessary for us to build the capacity to manage these bigger numbers when they go up. Um, your other question was, um, yes, um, Kemri have been doing a wonderful job, and we must commend them. I think they have stood out as a medical research institute. And when I spoke to them yesterday, as we consulted on how to roll out mass testing sooner, they are working with the WHO and the Africa CDC on making sure that the kits that they have developed get approval so that we can use them to roll out mass testing. They have told us that they will be ready in a couple of weeks. Uh, I do not want to say specifically how many weeks, but the ministry will communicate as and when these kits are ready so that we can roll out the big exercise of mass testing. Because as you are aware, we have limited testing at the moment the rollout of mass testing across the country and in all counties will give us the extent of this pandemic and will give us also the opportunity for its management and containment. Yes, my friend? Where did you get that information? Where did you get that report? <laughs> the government has established a framework for well-wishers, including all Kenyans, to make donations in support of this effort of management of COVID-19. 
every Kenyan is encouraged to make donations irrespective of the size of the donation. As you are aware, the president and I have already surrendered our salaries, 80% of our salaries. So, uh, my friend, if you can also make a small contribution from your salary, it would go a long way, I'm sure. And uh, secondly, about um, health workers. Um, the president has directed the Ministry of Health and the Public Service Commission to work out a mechanism of how our health workers at the front line will be considered. That exercise is ongoing. Government through cabinet is going to arrive at that decision and His Excellency the President will announce to the country what intervention and what incentives will be made available to our frontline health workers. Last one. Yes, my friend. Ulusema swali lako ni mboga. Ama ulusema ni vipi yo. Kwanza nafikiri umenipatia nafasi ya kusema machache kwa Kiswahili. Janga tulilo nalo katika taifa letu la Kenya la corona. Sio mzaha na sio janga rahisi. Na ndiyo sababu nimetoa taarifa hii asubuhi ya leo kwa sababu wa Kenya wengi bado hawaja elewa ya kwamba tuko na janga kubwa katika taifa letu na watu wengi wakisikia ya kwamba osha mikono usisalimiane weka social distance na usitembee ovyo unaweza ukae nyumbani watu wengi wanaona pengine tatizo hili sio kubwa kwa sababu watu wengi wamezoea kama kuna ugonjwa lazima udungwe sindano ufanywe upasuaji upatiwe dawa ile iko kali ndio ijulikane ya kwamba kuna tatizo na ndio sababu nataka ni waeleze wa Kenya wajue ya kwamba tuko na tahadhari kubwa na janga hili linaweza kutuangamiza kama taifa na sababu hiyo tunawauliza wa Kenya ingawaje janga hili ni kubwa na imelete tisho sio Kenya peke yake katika dunia mzima tunaweza kuikabili kwa kufanya mambo ambayo yanaonekana ni rahisi lakini mambo haya yatatuepusha na janga hili la corona kuosha mikono kukoma kusalimiana kuweka ile social distancing kama huna kazi ya eh, kama sio lazima uende mahali popote ukae nyumbani na wale wote ambao wanaenda kazini tumewauliza wale walio katika maofisi factories na sehemu zingine wananchi wanafanyia kazi ama biashara wahakikisha ya kwamba wafanyikazi wanakuja kazini kwa mbadala kwa shift wengine wanaweza kuja leo wengine wakuja kesho wanaweza kuja masaa tofauti ndio tuweke ile hali ya kuhakikisha kwamba tunazuia virusi vya corona kuenda kutoka mtu mmoja hadi mwingine kwa sababu virusi hizi hivi vya corona havina uwezo wa kutembea binafsi inahitaji eh, watu ambao wanatembea inahitaji eh, mili ya watu ili eh, kuzaa na, kuen, na kujiendeleza na sababu hiyo ndio sisi tunawauliza wa Kenya wote mahali popote walipo sisi wote ni wanajeshi katika 
jeshi hii ya kupigana na coronavirus na yale tutakayofanya hata ingawaje unaona ni mambo rahisi hiyo ndio itatuepusha na kutuokoa kutoka janga hili na ndio sababu nawauliza wananchi wote mahali popote walipo tuweze kusikiza maelezo ya professionals wetu wa ministry wa ya afya na tuyafuate kikamilifu kuhakikisha kwamba tunajiepusha na tunasaidia katika kukabiliana na janga hili la corona vile 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 umeuliza wananchi wote kuna mambo mengi ambayo kama serikali tumependekeza kwenye bunge letu mambo ambayo yatasaidia wananchi wote wa Kenya na hasa wananchi ambao wako na mapato ya chini na mapendekezo haya tuliyopeleka kule bunge na vile vile nime, ni, tumeuliza county governments waweze kufanya hivyo tuhakikisha kwamba tunabadilisha budget zetu tuweze kuhakikisha kwamba tunaweza kuwafikia na kuwasaidia wale wote ambao wameadhirika na ukosefu wa kazi na kazi zilizopunguzwa na wengine waliolizwa kwenda likizo na matatizo kama vile yale umesema kwa hivyo sisi wote kama serikali na kama bunge jambo hili liko katika meza yetu yetu ya mjadala na baada ya bunge kushughulikia jambo hili tutawaeleza ni vipi serikali itaendesha intervention sambazo tayari tumeelekeza kule bunge thank you very much good people na watakia kila naheri asanteni sana na Mungu awabariki